Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. And I want to share with you right now the story behind the photo story from the Grand Canyon. Now, when I was out at the Grand Canyon, we were shooting the pilot episode for the Fronos Photo TV show, which you can check out right here on your screen. Go ahead and click there to see the full episode as well as behind the scenes footage and be able to download all the full res images that I'm about to show you and some raw files. But I want to share with you the personal side of it, the personal stories uh, that I brought home with me from the Grand Canyon, all while going through the images that I shot with the Canon 5D SR and the Nikon D810. So let's get into the images right now. So as you can see right here, what I'm going to do is talk about the images, not the settings, not anything more than just the images, because I want to tell the story of the images and, and just give you a feel for them, not tell you, you know, all of the settings. I'll have other videos that do that, but like I said before, I'm going to include some raw files for you to go ahead and download over on the website, but you can see these full res exports as well as all of the other ones that I took over on the website as well. So, you know, this was when we were going out to the Grand Canyon, working our way there. It was like an hour and a half ride from where we were at, and this was when we just got off of pavement. So we were getting off of pavement to then take the, the final leg, another half an hour drive over, well, down to the Grand Canyon. Now this is Navajo territory. We had permission to be there. It's private land. Uh, it's not national park land. So that's why we could fly the drones that you saw over in the video. But we came up to this road and I'm like, wow, there's three ways to go, which way to go? And I thought that told a great story. And I also thought that the, the sky was huge. There was a lot of, there were a lot of clouds, there was a lot of coverage. And I thought something like this really played well. Uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, I am not a landscape photographer. I don't shoot a lot of landscapes, but this was a great challenge. And it was a lot of fun to go out there and challenge myself to do something different and to be able to come home with images that I think are really, really good and, and worked well. Uh, so play with the rule of thirds is what I did right here. You know that in a, a few pictures prior, I had the, the path that went three different ways. Well, I just took the one path, and now you can just see it leading and winding all the way down and around, and this is the Grand Canyon all the way back here. So I'm using a circular polarizer where I can to bump up the contrast, basically, to make the skies go boom and make everything look great. Just playing around with different types of images. You got lots of sky here. Um, the 5D SR worked out very well out there. And honestly, they gave me the 16 to 35 to use, 2.8 version 2, and that's not one of the recommended lenses for that body. I wanted to take the 11 to 24, but they didn't have any for me to take out because it was brand new at the time. So this was when we first got to the Grand Canyon where we were at. This is not the actual horseshoe uh, that you see where the tourists go. This is a different horseshoe uh, further down, about two hours away, two and a half hours away from the more touristy areas. And this was just amazing that you go out there and you see something like this. And yes, it is a big hole in the ground, and it's very hard for the mind to comprehend that you could fit the Empire State Building in it standing up, and that's how deep the thing is. It's so hard to fathom, but there's 3,000 foot sheer cliffs that we're standing on. Now, this is when we took a walk. Uh, we can say, see somewhere over here to the left. It's more over here, but this is the camp. We were far away from the camp. This is where we were. This was Todd walking back with a couple of lenses. It's, it's five in the morning, um, right as the sun was going up, and it's just cool. Now, what I'm showing you now are what I think are my favorite shots, but it's just what it was actually a 30 minute walk to get from there, well maybe 20 minute walk to get from there to where we were. It's just amazing how far things actually are. This is Matt Joffe, one of our film crew, uh, and he decided to stand there and I was like, holy Jesus, man, what are you crazy? But he did, he, he stood there and I thought it was great the way that the early morning, it was about 5.30 when this was happening, sun was lighting up his face and I had to just take pictures of him. Uh, this was still sunrise. I gave one of the other guys that was helping us out, out the camera with the 70 to 200, set it up for him so that we could get the, uh, the silhouette, and boom, we got the, this is our crew. This is what we filmed that show with, the four of us. I'm in it, Steven is here, right here on the left, Matt Joffe's here on the right, and then Todd did what Todd does, but Todd was the producer behind it. Matt helped tremendously with that, and so did Steven. Um, we, all had, we all did a lot of work. We, we, we stayed up quite a bit. Um, 
black and whites play out very well out there as well. This is just, it's just solid. It's just, it just, the tones work really well, especially when you wake up and you don't have a lot of clouds. When there's not a lot of clouds in the sky, it's like, well, I guess there's not much interest to the images because the, the clouds are what make it. So when we first got there, clouds. When the second day, not a lot of clouds. And coming up, you're going to see what happened the third day. Uh, and also show you the Nikon pictures. But I love seeing the different sediment levels, the layers of the, the eras. Can we, can we load, please? Can we please load? Anyway, there we go. Just the different... Just the history, the millions of millions of years that it took to do this. I couldn't forget to take tighter shots as well. You got the tighter shots. You got to look at the look at the color, the red of the clay and the dirt. I mean, this stuff. People may never have sat here or anywhere in any of this area. They may have never set foot here in the history of this place. You also can't forget that there's growth. They actually had record fall rain, which led to the, the spurting up of some of these things. Just look at this beautiful uh, area. This is called PP Point out here, which we rode out onto, and you can see over on the site, phronosphoto.com slash show, behind the scenes footage of us rolling out onto that point. It was absolutely incredibly insane. But uh, look at this, it's just, it was just cool. It looked like, to me, it looked like a golf course, but it's really not a golf course. It's, it's, each one of these things is an individual bush. They're like these little ground bushes things and stuff. Ah, oh, sorry that it's taken a while to load, but it's probably because the previews went away. Here's just a vertical shot, nice shot of the horseshoes. Um, then horseshoes. Then we went out to this area and we got um, really cool shots looking down the back of the Grand Canyon or whatever side of the Grand Canyon. But just look at the colors and the tones and everything that you're able to capture here. Just you got it running through here. Ah. It's just really, really cool images. It was fun to shoot. We flew the drone out there as well. You weren't allowed to cross into the you weren't allowed to cross into the Grand Canyon because that is not private land. That's all national park. So the 5DSR is not really known to to be a low light camera, but it's certainly a high megapixel camera. And I went ahead and shot this one night, and there were meteors. We had a meteor shower that night. You can see the one meteor the two meteors, three, four, five. They are just all over the place. And if it would load, it would be much clearer. Let me just let it sit still for a second. And sitting, there we go. You can just see, yeah, this is noisy and this is grainy, but these are millions, billions of stars. It's just insane that you're able to capture something like this. So let me switch over to the Nikon camera because I shot both. It wasn't about what camera was going to be the best. It was just I wanted to shoot both as a, as a nice test. The first time I've ever shot nighttime star trail or star photos, not star trail photos, was this photo, was this time. Uh, and these blinking lights, they're not meteors. These are actually, um, they're planes. They're planes going by and that's what you're getting. Now, the long exposure, this isn't very hard. You want to shoot below 20, 20 seconds because the Earth is moving and anything over 15 to 20 seconds, you're going to start to get blurriness of the stars, and that's not what you want. You want to get around infinity focus, but pull back slightly, just so that you get almost everything in focus. Uh, and aperture, I was wide open. I was at 2.8 for this. And, and you just play around. It's not that hard to do shots like this um, and, and get the tent lit up. This is base camp, and yeah, just a longer exposure. And this is the Milky Way. It's just sweet. Just, I mean, I, I, I pointed, wait, it, it's missing one image. Yep, it's missing one image. Let me get that for you. This one, forgot to change it. Um, you got to remember, we are shooting, like you shoot the photo, I'll show you what it started out as. Let me get back to the develop panel just to show you real quick. It, it was, well, it started out like this. And then once I processed it, I got that, which is absolutely spectacular. Just the colors that I was able to pull out of the D810 for this RAW file of the Milky Way. Ah, I mean, it doesn't look like this on the camera at all, but what you get is just incredible. Matt, again, just hanging out over the cliff. Same thing right there. You can get a feel for that. More photojournalistic shots here this time, but that's what I love to do, not just landscapes. And this is Steven and Todd discussing what they're shooting and what they're trying to get for the shoot. Um, I had the 14 to 24, which was great. And as you can see, better cloud coverage this day. 
um, for, for where we were at on base camp. Now, this is a Hogan. This is a part of the story that you can hear over in the show, first episode, and people lived in here. Family members, family groups. You're talking about seven, eight people living in this small area. They would cook, eat, sleep, everything. This is the inside, as you can see, uh, from from the outside, it's it's it was actually pretty cool. And when I say cool, I mean weather-wise. Even though it was scorching like 100 degrees out, it was much cooler inside the Hogan. One of my favorite, one of my more favorite shots is just something like this. It's just looking out over the over PP Point, which was which is right here. You're gonna see us. Uh, you're gonna see photos from this area looking back in just a second. But love the colors, love the tones. God, it's just look at the light, the way that the, the sunlight comes in and the clouds, the way that they're separated and the distance that you can see. It is just awesome that you could do this. So now we're out at PP Point. If we look closely right here, that is camp. That is right where I was standing when I took the other photo. This is base camp. This is where you saw that Canon photo of the, the or the, the earlier photo with the night sky. This is, this is base camp. And that's how far away we are. And this, uh, some of those early black and white images that I took, and where I shot, photographed Todd all the way back, that's all the way back here behind this point. We're shooting somewhere right, or where Matt Joffe is hanging off the cliff. He's hanging off of it right here, and you have all of this drop. That was the incredible part. I mean, just look at this view that we had. Scary. I didn't want to sit there. Um, I love this. I love the overcast sky. Rain was coming in. We could get to rain in the distance. You'll see that in another photo. But this was the Canon with the meteor, the Nikon with the meteor shower. Not as good as the first night that I shot. It was much brighter. But boom. This was right before we were leaving. This is rain at a distance. Beautiful clouds. Beautiful everything going on here. Just love the wispiness of them. And you might think that was I using a long, uh, an ND filter with an extremely long shutter speed? Not so much. The clouds actually look that wispy. That's just how they looked. And I thought this looked spectacular in black and white. Very interesting in color. Um, uh, you can play with some of the raw files, try it for yourself and see what you think. But that's the rainstorm that was coming our way that we were running away from after a while. And that's the last image right there. But you can just see the rain at, the dis at a distance engulfing PP Point and it was coming for us next. And those are what I think are some of the best photos from that trip uh, from, to the Grand Canyon, both, both with the Nikon and with the Canon. What a tremendous opportunity to go out there. Adventure Driven was great. Those were the guys that, that they set up the tents. They took us on this, this wonderful adventure. And you can see the entire show over on the website, phronosphoto.com slash show. You can check out the pilot episode and, and see, what we, see what we did. But I just wanted to share with you my thoughts behind the images. I'll do other videos that I edit things and go, get into more technical details, but sometimes it's about the image. It doesn't matter right now whether I was technically right or wrong. It's just about the amazing photos that I think I was able to capture. Great photo story. Unbelievable time out there. Really appreciative to everybody that was a part of it. Now go ahead and you can check out all the full res images over on the site as well as download some of the raw files. But be sure to check out the pilot episode right here if you haven't done so so that you can check it out and see what all the fuss is about. And we'll leave it at that. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.